in a follow-up recall, two implants under a Toronto bridge show severe intrabony defects. Once the prosthesis is removed, at a clinical examination, the probing pocket depth is from mesial to distal 8, 8, 6 and 8 mm. A surgical intervention is planned. A first crestal incision connecting the two neighboring implants is performed. Then the crystal incision is carried out on the mesial and distal aspect. Intracircular incisions are performed around the two implants with an internal bevel that will remove a first portion of granulation tissue. With the tip of an M23 scaler, the soft tissue is detached from bone, allowing an easier elevation of the flap. Two small vertical releasing incisions are performed on the mesial and distal aspect of the crestal incision. With a periosteal elevator, the flap elevation is performed. Once elevated the buccal flap with a full thickness elevation, the two defects are exposed. With the blade, the granulation tissue inside the defect is easily removed. A clamor forceps is used to go on in the soft tissue removal inside the defect. With an ultrasonic instrumentation, the defect is cleaned and the soft tissue further removed. The granulation tissue is further removed by means of a, an alveolar curette. And in the narrowest spaces, an M23 scaler is used to remove 
the granulation tissue. After each manual instrumentation, an ultrasonic instrumentation is performed too. The implant surface starts to be cleaned by the ultrasonic handpiece, then with the diamond burr on slow speed handpiece allows a better soft tissue removal from the defect and a further instrumentation of the implant surface on top of each thread. Then with the airflow device with glycine, the implant surface is cleaned and inside the space between a thread and another, a metal brush is used to clean the implant surface. Ultrasonic instrumentation completes the debridement. In the portion of implants outside the intra-bony defect, the surface is polished by means of a diamond bird on red ring handpiece and with rubber tips. The proteinized bovine bone with fibrin sealant is used to fill the intrabony defects. The mixture of BIOS and T-seal is packed with an amalgam condenser with a gentle pressure in order to allow a better penetration of blood and during the setting time of the sealant, a stable clot will form. A medical collagen sheet is used on top of the biomaterials on the palatal aspect in order to stand to the soft tissue pressure from the palate. Resorbable sutures are used to secure the flap. The Toronto bridge will be repositioned at the end of the surgery, therefore the resorbable sutures will make easier the suture removal after two weeks. To secure the flap between the two neighboring implants, a modified mattress suture is used, an internal one followed by an external one in a continuous way.
at a six month x-ray a nice bone filling around the two implants that had perimplantitis is shown.